on the news tonight. National Assembly adjourned sitting till after governorship elections. In business, Central Bank of Nigeria releases 596 billion naira for agriculture credit scheme projects. And on the foreign scene, Iran Foreign Minister Mohammed Zarif resigns. Hello and welcome to Super Screen's flagship news. We're broadcasting to you live from Lagos State, Nigeria. I am Olami Dionga. Many thanks for joining us tonight. And we'll begin with this story where the National Assembly has adjourned the city until March the 12th, when the governorship and state houses of assembly elections would have been concluded. After approving the votes and proceedings, following a motion moved by River Senator Andrew Uchindu, the Senate Majority Leader Ahmed Lawan moved another motion that all matters on the other be stood down to another legislative day. The motion was seconded by Minority Leader and was approved by the Senate. The quorum of the Senate shall be one third of the members of the Senate. Mr. President, it is quite glaring and obvious that we have not constituted the required quorum as provided for in our standing orders. I will therefore submit that the Senate adjourns due to the lack of the quorum. Mr. President, because we don't want to go through a repeat of this kind of situation, elections into the governorship and state assembly offices will be conducted on the 9th of next month, March. Therefore, Mr. President, it is my opinion that this Senate adjourns until the 12th, three days after the elections would have been held. It is in favor that we do adjourn till the 12th, yes? 12th of March. Say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The ayes are right. So the Senate is currently adjourned to 12th of of March. The Red Chamber lawmakers are expected to resume on the 12th of March after the governorship polls. Away from that, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has projected results of the presidential elections from Nasarawa State, accusing the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, of manipulating the results of the poll. During a press briefing in Abuja, the party's national chairman, Uche Sakondas, maintained that the results were manipulated between ward collection centers and the collection center in Abuja. The PDP has accused both the government of President Mohamed Buhari and the All Progressives Congress of working with INEC officers to allegedly manipulate the figures for results already announced at polling units nationwide in local government areas where the PDP had commanding votes. The have cancelled several or several polling units in order for APC uh, to retain power. This will be very, very unacceptable. All results from the northern parts of the country where, where car were not being should be voided by INEC in accordance with INEC guidelines. We appeal to the leadership of INEC and in particular the INEC chairman, to remain impartial and not to become the winning agents to disenfranchise our people and derail our democracy. Because the world is watching and history will indeed pass judgment. And our reactions have continued to trail the outcome of the presidential election results announced in Yobe. Lagos State by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and the Chief Coalition Officer, Professor Felix Salako. Speaking to journalists, the party agents of the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressives Congress, APC, expressed different views on the process and overall conduct of the collation of the results. This election has been wonderful. It's been well organized. Apart from the little setback we had last week, I think it's been a a, a, a commendable election. My message to Lagosians and to Nigerians is that 
be awful. I believe the best is yet to come. There are skirmishes here and there, but at the end of the day, we give glory to God that uh, lives are not lost, and uh, majority of the people were able to vote, and it is a welcome development that INEC has improved on its performance uh, in, during this particular exercise. We pray that Nigeria will continue to develop and people will take advantage of the numerous opportunities open to us as a nation. We are underdeveloped. We need to start growing so that the younger generation can have a pride of place in the community of, na in the community of nations. On his part, INEC Resident Electoral Commissioner in Lagos State, Samuel Olumekun, said he is satisfied with the conduct of the election, adding that the process was transparent and successful. We have uh, tried to live up to our billing by not only being transparent in all that we have done, but I'm sure you have seen that INEC has been transparent in all these transactions. Never mind that we had initial uh, logistic uh, challenges, but I think we overcame it. And uh, the election has been successfully conducted. We have taken note of a lot of issues, and these issues will be discussed, especially at the uh, Agency for Security. The gubernatorial candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Jimmy Agbaje, has condemned election malpractices in some parts of the state. Jimmy Agbaje, at a press briefing at his campaign office in Obanikuru, expressed disappointment in the election exercise conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, citing Okota amongst other local government areas as places where irregularities were experienced. Them in the strongest terms, this act of violence. Uh, it is deliberate by the ruling party in Lagos State uh, to, to intimidate, uh, to discourage members from coming out to vote. We have had situations where our coalition, our coalition agents have even been arrested, leaving the coalition centers open to manipulation. That again is not acceptable. We we'll go back to the issue of the election day, where in a lot of cases, including my own case, where card readers were not used. This opens room for all kinds of manipulation. You have a situation where the agents are not in a position to verify the identity of uh, the voters vis-a-vis -vis the PVCs that are presented. The PDP governorship candidate in Lagos State further expressed his reservations in the election exercise. We have a pause that a lot of these results are being tampered with as I speak. Um, that is not going to be acceptable to us. We will not accept results that have been tampered with in Labour State. Um, we will take it from the beginning, from the problems that started from the polling unit. The guidelines were very clear that after election, after counting of votes, election results are supposed to be posted. We have no reports of election results being posted in Labour State at our polling units. And that is the beginning, that was the beginning of the problem, where it was just not happening that you had our election results posted on the wall at the polling unit. Having said that, at the collation center, you had a lot of intimidation of our agents. And the results was concentrated in some areas, particularly in the issue. We are, there was a party that was on this. The other party was created at will. The attorney officer was forced to write this. In some instances where we have the certain thing, there was no research into the first social plans. Nobody, no individual, has the right to stop them from carrying out their wishes. 
So I want to implore the security agencies that they should bring up to their responsibility. If everybody is allowed to defend themselves, we should imagine the kind of behavior that we're going to have in this country. Gradually, we are running towards Alan, and we keep imploring the agencies and people in government that they should give up to their personal responsibility. Away from that, election observers in Nigeria says there is great need for more transparency in the process in the country as results continue to be tallied from Saturday's vote. The delayed opening of poll centers and some problems with electronic voting machines were some key issues they pointed out that made the process of voting difficult for many people to cast their ballot. Now our recommendations short term to political parties and candidates include uh, to respect the rule of law and to call on supporters to remain peaceful before, during, and after the announcement of results. In practice, implementing the elections in 2019 was a retrogressive step in terms of uh, what should have been improvements in it. So it makes us worried and makes us really uh, concerned that the ability of Nigerian citizens to uh, freely make decisions about who rule them uh, has not yet been entrenched. And now the United Nations, African Union and ECOWAS have urged political parties to exercise restraint as the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, announces the results of the presidential and National Assembly's elections. The international bodies in a statement by ECOWAS Commission said their attention has been drawn to rejection of the results of the presidential election by one of the participating political parties even as they are still in progress of being released. They called on all candidates, political parties and Nigerians to continue to exercise patience, calm and restraint in order to allow full results of the election to be released by INEC. And now the opponent of the most state governor, Rochas Okorocha, in the senatorial race, Osita Izunaso, has protested against the results announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The All Progressives Grand Alliance Abga candidate who disclosed this to journalists in Imo State alleged that Okorocha manipulated the poll. Also reacting, the former member of the House of Representatives and the PDP deputy governorship candidate in the state, Gerald Iroa, accused Okorocha of electoral fraud. You will recall that the returning officers, Francis Ibeawuchi, announced at the Coalition Center in Olu on Monday that Okorocha of the All Progressives Congress, ABC, polled 97,762 votes to win the election ahead of the People's Democratic Party's Jones, Onyereri, and All Progressives Grand Alliance, Ositas, Izunaso. Meanwhile, the returning officer for the Imo West Senatorial District election, Ibeawuchi Innocent, says he declared Governor Rocha Sokorocha the winner of the poll on the jurors. Innocent, to disclose this to journalists in Imo State, said he made the allegation on Monday while announcing the results of the poll held in district. Innocent said he is still on the jurors, declaring the winner. Still in Imo State, Imo State Governor Rocha Sokorocha has reacted to the allegation that he forced the returning officer of the Imo West Senatorial Election, Innocent Ibawuchi, to announce him as the winner of the election. Okorocha, in a statement by his Chief Press Secretary Sam Onwemedu, disclosed that the returning officer as a blatant liar, insisting that he deserves his victory. He said he asked the INEC Resident Electoral Commissioner at the unit to correct the anomalies of Ibawuchi, adding that they should examine him to know his mental state. The governor stressed that the returning officer may be acting a script and joining him to return the money he may have collected from those who are on the stands rigging in the elections. And now the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has declared the senatorial election in Imo North inconclusive. This came two days after the INEC office in Isyalam, Bano local government area in the senatorial district was set ablaze by persons suspected to be political talks. According to report, INEC declared the poll inconclusive due to the glaring cases of malpractice. INEC said fresh elections will be conducted in six polling units in Okigwe, Onuimo, adding that a new date has been fixed for the election. In Abia State, the Senator Mao Oabunwa campaign organization says it has been furnished with information which suggests that INEC operatives interfered with the electoral process in Abia North. 
coordinator of the organization, Upai Ukairo, in a statement claimed that the electoral result was predetermined and manipulated. Ukairo said the senatorial elections were a shock of all well-meaning patriots who believe in democracy, adding that it is tragic that INE could conduct an election without the issuance of Form EC40G used in capturing counseled votes and places where there were no voting. He further claimed that there was no word collation in the entire Benda local government area, hence demanding that results be cancelled in line with the Electoral Act and the Constitution. And now coming up on Super Screen's flagship news, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, releases $596 billion for the Agriculture's Credit Scheme project. That's in business. We'll bring you details of this story and many more after the break. Welcome back to Super Screen's flagship news and now for some business stories. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has released a total amount of $596.44 billion for the 576 projects under the Commercial Agricultural Credit Scheme for inception to the participating banks for disbursement. Figures obtained from the CBN on Monday revealed that of the total number of projects, 34 were in respect of state government. It also revealed that a total of $852.15 million was guaranteed to 5,454 farmers under the Agricultural Credit Guarantee Scheme in the fourth quarter of 2018. The amount represented a decrease of 40.1% and 5.9% below the levels in the preceding quarter and corresponding period of 2017. And now the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency in Amasa said is sought for greater involvement of women in the shipping industry. The Master Director General Dakuku Peterside, who disclosed this to journalists in Lagos State, said it will support initiatives aimed at getting more African women involved in the industry. Dakuku said it is in line with the global focus on enhancing the role of women in the maritime and shipping sector. The DG stressed that the blue economy is one critical sector that will create employment for the people and by contributing to the economic growth gives opportunity to both men and women. Still talking business, the international oil benchmark Brent crude has stumbled after the United States President Donald Trump ordered the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, to relax as prices get too high. Brent, against which Nigeria's oil is priced, has risen by around 20% this year, aimed primarily by OPEC's production courts, as well as U.S. sanctions on exports of crude from Iran and Venezuela. Trump has frequently blamed high oil crude prices of OPEC, while the U.S. has become the world's largest supplier thanks to the shale output. Still ahead tonight on Super Screen's flagship news, Iran Foreign Minister Mohammad Zarif resigns. We'll bring you details of this story on the foreign scene and many more in sports and entertainment after this break. 